Blessed is the kingdom of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Glory to Thee, O God. Give 
prison that I may give thanks to thy name. Out of the depth, uh, the righteous will surround me, for thou wilt deal bountifully with me. Out of the depths I cry to thee, O Lord, Lord, hear my voice. Oh, 
Be attentive to the voice of my supplications. Shouldst mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with thee. Standing beside the bed, asleep in accordance with nature's law, the disciples of the redeemed are prepared to carry thy body to the grave. They Take I wait for thee, O Lord. My soul has waited for thy word. My soul has hoped on the Lord. Till night from the morning watch that Israel hope on the Lord. Protestant reformers' words, 
and by that Belshazzar controlled mockery, the living church, gathering them into one look of the chief shepherd. With the Lord there is mercy, and with him is plenteous redemption, and he will deliver Israel from all his iniquities. Today we extol the example of Alexander, the great pastor of America, Russia. He spread the things of faith throughout the Atlantic and beyond, watering them with his words, sweat, and tears. Then return to Russia, where he nourished Christ's vineyard with his blood. Now as with Moses he lies in an unknown grave, yet he now has the gold and The fruits of his labors reveal his righteous life. By which we are shown the way to heaven. Praise the Lord, all nations. Praise Him, all people. Today we celebrate the memory of our most humble Alexander. Great evangelist and champion of the truth, for he preached the faith throughout the new world. He struggled unto death in its defense in Russia, thus proving himself a true disciple of the Lord. To whom he ceaselessly intercedes for our souls. For his mercy is confirmed on us, and the truth of the Lord endures forever. Today we sing the praises of our glorious Father Alexander. For he dedicated his heart to Christ, walking America from comforting his people on its great hardships and tribulations, and locating on every half of the secular powers. I shall tell you of my delusions of the secular world, shepherding unto the green pasture of heaven. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Today a new star has been added to America's constellation of saints. A great pastor of his hand around to gather with holy Tinker Raphael, Alexis, Faith, and John, all those folk known and unknown. Now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Majesty, in Jesus, 
The reading from the wisdom of Solomon. The souls of the righteous are in the hands of God, and no, tor no torment will ever touch them. The eyes of the foolish, they seem to have died. Their departure was thought to be an affliction, and their going from us to be their destruction. But they are at peace. Though on the side of men they were punished, their hope is full of immortality. Having been disciplined a little, they will receive great good, as God tested them and found them worthy of himself. Like gold in the furnace, he tried them. Like a sacrificial burnt offering, he accepted them. In the time of their visitation, they will shine forth and will run like sparks to the stubble. They will govern nations and rule over peoples. The Lord will reign over them forever. Those who trust in him will understand truth, and the faithful will abide with him in love. Because grace and mercy are upon his elect, and he watches over his holy ones. With the time. The reading from Proverbs. Let us attend. The mouth of the righteous brings forth wisdom, but the perverse tongue will be cut off. The lips of the righteous know what is acceptable with the mouth of the wicked, what is perverse. A false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just sweet is his delight. When pride comes, there, then comes disgrace, but with the humble is wisdom. The integrity of the upright guides them, but the crookedness of the treacherous destroys them. Riches do not fall for the day of wrath, but righteousness delivers from death. The righteousness of the blameless keep his way straight, but the wicked falls by his own wickedness. The righteous of the upright delivers them, but the treacherous are taken captive by their lust. When the wicked dies, his hope perishes, and the expectation of the godless comes to naught. The righteous is delivered from trouble, and the wicked gets into it instead. With his mouth, the godless man will destroy his anger, but by knowledge the righteous are delivered. When it goes well with the righteous, the city rejoices, and when the wicked perish, there are shops of gladness. Wisdom. The reading from the wisdom of Solomon. Let us attend. But the righteous man, though he die early, will be at rest. For old age is not honored for length of time, nor measured by number of years. But understanding his gray hair for men, and a blameless life is ripe old age. There was one who pleased God and was loved by him, and while living among sinners, he was taken up. He was caught up lest evil change his understanding, or guile deceive his soul. For the fascination of the wicked obscures what is good, and roaming desire perverts the innocent mind. Being perfected in a short time, he fulfilled long years, for his soul was pleasing to the Lord. Therefore he took him quickly from the midst of wickedness. Yet the people saw and did not understand, nor take such a thing to heart that God's grace and mercy are with his elect, and he watches over his holy ones. Love to the earth, walk in meekness and humility. I 
as a good pastor, you lay down your life for me. Pray for us, Lord Almighty, Alexander, that our souls may be illumined. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen.
to your spirit. The Perkimen on the eighth tone, with the righteous exalting glory, let them sing for joy on their couches. Sing to the Lord in your song, his praise in the assembly of the saints. Righteous, exalting glory, and then sing for joy on that Wisdom. The reading from the epistle of the Holy Apostle Paul to the Hebrews. Brethren, remember them which have the rule over you, who have spoken unto you the word of God whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, and today, and forever. Be not carried about with diverse and strange doctrines, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. We have an altar, where if they have no right to eat, which serve the tabernacle, for the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin, are burned outside the camp. Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered outside the gate. Let us go therefore unto him outside the camp, bearing his reproach. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. By him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. But to do good and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifices God is well pleased. And to thy spirit, Alleluia, 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 in the second tone. Thy priests shall clothe them, themselves with righteousness. And thy saints shall rejoice. For the Lord has elected Zion, he has chosen her for his dwelling place. to eat, 
and will come forth and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch, or come in the third watch, and find them so, blessed are those servants. And this know, that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched, and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be therefore ready also, for the Son of Man comes at an hour when you think not. Is the 
documentation of exactly what occurred, but the oral tradition is that he was martyred. He came to serve here with us. He came to give us his blood, sweat, and tears to build up churches that to this day, to gather in flocks of people that had strayed from the Orthodox faith, to the Catholic faith, the Protestant faith, to no faith at all, and to energetically bring them back in this new and strange land to Orthodox faithful. He provided centers of worship, and at the end of his time here, on February 26, 1914, it says exactly 18 years after his ordination to the priesthood, in his farewell address to the American church, Father Alexander said, Farewell, American Orthodox Moose, my dear mother, the Holy American Church. I, your ever grateful son, bowed fully to the ground before you. You gave birth to me spiritually, you nurtured me from your depths, you inspired me by your strength. Through the shining witness of your founders, through the enlightened apostolic teachings of your preachers, through the fervor of your faithful flock, you have given me the greatest possible joy to be your son. He departed for Russia. As I said, he began to work within the great church council of 1917 and 1918. Sweeping reforms were slated to come into the Russian church to make the church more accessible to the average Russian person. But this council was to be, was not to be. Given the October Revolution, it never came to pass, and the church in Russia began to delve into decades of suffering. And it said in this case that this was, it seems to be, when the words of our Lord began to apply to him. Watch. You do not know when the hour of the coming of the Son of Man will be. For each of us, of course, this applies to our own death. It of course applies generally to when we will come again in glory. But even now we began to feel the pressure of these outside forces. And it said that it is, he stated that as the fate of Russia was at stake, the church and the council in particular should not shy away from the struggle to save the nation. Speaking about the efforts of the council to upbuild the church, he outlined his preliminary plan for order and healing in the internal life of the church and stated with some bitterness, it seems as if there were builders who were furiously preparing blueprints, plans, and so forth, for the construction of an edifice, and at the same time, were calmly observing the destruction, brick by brick, of this edifice by enemies. And yet, when you read his life, and I encourage you to read the entire, it's a long entry on the OCA uh, website, that you note the way that these hardships were presented. They were not mourned over, they were not, they were grieved over, but they were called temptations. Even in the midst of suffering, a temptation to take your eyes off of Christ. 
in the midst of pressure and difficulty, they were temptations, not excuses, not explanations, but they were temptations to take your heart away from prayer. They were temptations to slow the work that has been given to you to do. This resolute man of God stands as an example for us to continue our own internal work. The outward work of the church and to stand resolute against the temptations, however they come, whether from a totalitarian state or from the tyranny of our own sinful, broken hearts. May we ask this great saint, this new martyr, to pray for us, to strengthen our resolve, pray and to dedicate ourselves and each other and all our lives unto Christ our God. To him be all glory, honor, and worship together with his Father who has no beginning, and the all holy good and life and spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Let's say with all our soul and all our mind, let us say Mother Galina, Tanya, for Nina, Zachary, Joseph, Elizabeth, Joseph, Christina, Oksana, Caleb, Phyllis, Jeff, Shetlana, Alexander, Clayton, Mary, Jason, Vera, Galina, Wayne, Eric, Barbara, Roger, Robert, Elizabeth, Ruben, Belen, Juan, Mary, Gosselin, for the suffering Christians in the Middle East, all those suffering and affected by COVID-19, for those who have suffered loss of life and property in the wildfires for Leanne, Angela, and Alexandra Nicole, for our catechumens, Lauren, Sherry, William, Patty, Josephine, and Anne, for Rita Gregory, Joseph, Ryan, Joseph, and Samuel, for the brethren of this holy temple, those who they have died, and for the pardon and remission of their sins. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. 
receive. And we pray for those who bring offerings and do good works in this holy and all venerable temple. For those who labor and those who sing, and for all the people here present, who await thy great and rich mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Now with the merciful God of us, as mankind, and unto thee we send up glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages.
So 
in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us stand to right, let us stand with fear, let us attend that we may offer a holy oblation in peace. Have mercy of peace, a sacrifice of
offering unto thee, thine own of thine own, on behalf of all and for all. Let us 
Together with thine all holy good and right giving spirit, now and ever and on the wages of ages. Jesus. 
Jesus Christ, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the highest. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. He shall not fear evil tidings. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The fervor of the faith, full of the Holy Spirit. I believe, O Lord, and I confess that thou art truly the Christ, the Son of the living God. Who came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am first. I believe also that this is truly thy own most pure body, and that this is truly thy own precious blood. Therefore I pray thee, have mercy upon me, and forgive my transgressions, both voluntary and involuntary, of word and in deed, committed in knowledge or ignorance, and make me worthy to partake of that condemnation. Of thy most pure mysteries, for the remission of my sins, and to life everlasting. Amen. Of thy mystical supper, O Son of God, except that today is an infant, for I will not speak of thy mystery to thy enemies. Neither like Judas will I give thee a kiss, but like the people I confess thee. Remember me, O Lord, in thy kingdom. May the communion of thy holy mysteries be known to my judgment. Nor to my condemnation, O Lord, but to the healing of soul and body. Amen. Place thou in the ark of thy strength. To David, a sure oath from which you will not turn back. It's open, open to welcome the gates of the Most High as she proceeds with glory to her son. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. You revealed as an emulator of the saints, so all praiseworthy Alexander. I'm just a martyr, you revealed the his conceptions of the faith. You attracted many by your eloquent preaching like Christmas song. As the job of a child, you hold back your brother from the Levites of Unia, as well as the spiritually dead. You use the printed word to teach the scattered people the 
venerate Christ's holy resurrection. For we hope through the cross joy is coming to all the world. Let us ever bless the Lord, praising his resurrection. For by enduring the cross for us, he has destroyed death by death. Shine, shine, O new Jerusalem, the glory of the Lord has shone on you. Exalt now and be glad, O Zion. To prepare to us in the resurrection of thy Son. O Christ, great and most holy Pascha, O wisdom, word, and power of God, grant that we may not forget we partake of thee. In the never-ending day of thy kingdom. O God, save thy people and bless thine inheritance. We have seen the true light. We have received the heavenly Spirit, we have found a true faith, worshiping the undivided Trinity, who has saved. Give peace to thy world, to thy churches, to thy priests, to all those that sit on the Lord, 
to the armed forces and to all thy people. For every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from thee, the Father of lights, and unto thee be sent of glory, thanksgiving and worship, to the Father and to the Son of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Be the name of the Lord, has forth and forever. Blessed be the name of the Lord, has forth and forevermore. Blessed be the name of the Lord, has forth and Praise will be continually in my mouth. In the Lord my soul shall make her boast. Let the meek hear and be glad. Magnify the Lord with me. And let us sing songs and sing together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my afflictions. They drew near to him and were enlightened. And your faces shall not be ashamed. This poor one cried in the Lord who him and saved him from all his tribulations. The angel of the Lord will encamp round about them that fear him, and shall deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who hopeth in him. Hear the Lord, all ye his saints, for there is no lack for them that fear him. The rich have become poor and hungry, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Amen. Glory to thee, O God. Glory to thee, O God. Glory to thee, O God. I thank thee that thou hast, O oh Lord my God, for thou hast not rejected me a sinner, but hast made me worthy to be a partaker of thy holy things. I thank thee for thou hast permitted me the unworthy to commune of thy most pure and heavenly gifts. But, O oh Master, who lovest mankind, who for our sakes this die and rise again, and gavest us these awesome and light creating mysteries, for the good and sanctification of our souls and bodies, and the need for the healing of soul and body, the repelling of every adversary, the illumining of the eyes of my heart, the peace of my spiritual powers, the faith and shame, the love and faith, the fulfilling of wisdom, the observing of thy commandments, the receiving of thy divine grace, and the attaining of thy kingdom. Preserved by them in thy holiness, may I always remember thy grace, and live not for myself alone, but for thee, our master and benefactor. May I pass from this life in the hope of eternal life, and so attain to the everlasting rest, with the voice of those who feast is unceasing, and the gladness of those who behold the goodness of thy countenance is unending. For thou art the true desire and the ineffable joy of those who love thee, O Christ our God, and all creation sings of thy praise forever. Amen. Freely thou hast given me thy body for my food, O thou who art afar, consuming the unworthy. And so be not of my creator, but it's sin, enter into my members, my veins, my heart. Consume the thorns of my transgressions, cleanse my soul, and sanctify my reasonings. Make firm my knees and body, live with my five senses, nail me to the fear of thee. Always protect, guard, and keep me from soul destroying words and deeds. Cleanse me, purify me, and adorn me. Give me understanding and illumination. Show me to be a temple of thy one spirit and not the home of many sins. May every evil thing, every carnal passion flee from me as from afar as I become thy tabernacle through communion. I offer thee as intercessors all the saints, the leaders of the body, the souls, thy forerunner, the wise apostles, and thy pure and blameless mother. Accept their prayers and thy love, O my Christ, and make me thy servant and child of light. For thou art the only sanctification and light of our souls, O good one, and to thee our master and God. 
we ascribe glory day by day. O Lord, the Lord be upon you for his grace and love for mankind, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Glory to Christ, our God, and our hope to all pray to thee. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Amen. May Christ our God. Christ our God, and the prayers of his most dear mother, of the holy, glorious, and all of the apostles of our Father among the saints, John, the Prince of Smyrna, Bishop of Constantinople, of St. Anthony the Great, the heavenly patron of this holy temple, of the holy new martyr, Alexander Orthodoxy, together with the prophet Samuel, Stephen, the first king of Hungary, and all this light of glory, whose memory is to keep in the church this day. And all the holy and righteous ancestors of God, your human and all the saints, have mercy on us and save us, for he is good and loves mankind. Thank you all. May we bless you on this uh, feast. Uh, of the new martyr Alexander. Uh, may God grant you a peaceful evening. Thank you to those who came and sat, read, prayed, and ran, and served, and built. Uh, thank you all for uh, and, and, and watched and prayed from uh, that uh, we continue on uh, bit by bit with our little corner of the work of the church. So may God uh, bless you and Lord willing to uh, you. Keep me in your prayers. I'll depart uh, sometime tomorrow in the afternoon uh, for Victoria, and I will return sometime the next uh, afternoon uh, prior to Vespers. So uh, may God grant me safe travels, and uh, we'll, we'll see you all this weekend. Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory, Glory forever. forever.